Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's time for another Pokemon TCG Online video featuring, as you just saw, some Pokemon cards from the current Ultra Prism expansion of Pokemon TCG Online, or just TCG in general. What is this present all about? Also, Willow is in the room again, but she seems somewhat relaxed, somewhat subdued. All right, let's start things off here with a booster pack. Trade lock booster pack. Can't make use of that for trade purposes, but I might open that towards the end of the video because what we want to do is jump into the deck manager and take a look at a deck that I tried to record for yesterday for video. It did not want to work for me. You probably heard me complaining about that all throughout the actual video where we showed off the Golden Locks deck. This one is going to be featuring a Pokemon GX. The deck is called Fourth to the Past. If you don't know what that reference is, or if that's a reference to, you need to watch more movies from the 80s slash, I guess, 90s? I forget when the other two uh, the sequels came out, but anyway, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. But before we get started into that, as per usual, we got a whole stack of code cards here. Starting to get a little bit low. I need to restock at some point, but my friend Anderson from the Heroes Beacon Pokemon League has given me a number of codes. Randomly drawn, we're going to have, as you can see below, an Ancient Origins booster pack. Is that still... I don't think that's legal in the standard format right now. But anyways, it is still a booster pack. Still get some cards. Expanded format. Still acceptable. What's this? Product received. I know that. Get out of here. So get yourself the code card, of course. Or the code, I should say, down below the face cam. Take it here to the redeem codes. Pokemon TCG Online. Get yourself a 10 card online booster pack. Tradable as well. And trade either the booster pack itself intact, unopened, or open it up, trade off whatever cards you happen to get. Alright, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the fourth to the past deck here that I've assembled, featuring Dialga GX. Basic Pokemon, 180 HP, a Dragon type. It's got an interesting set of attacks here. First of all, overclock for a single metal energy. Draw cards until you have six cards in your hand. So, I'll admit, the first thought I had with this is I could have one Dialga GX active, I could have another one on the bench, just one metal energy to power up for overclock, continuously drawing to get six cards at the end of each turn, the other one on the bench I could be powering up for its attacks. I don't think that strategy worked out that well for me, unfortunately, so... I'm going to definitely want to make use of Overclock at least once, get off get as many cards out of hand as possible, play them all down, and then get up to six. I don't know, we'll have to play things out, play it by ear, see what happens. And uh, the other attack here, first of all, Shred, for a metal and two colorless energies, does 80. The attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon, so special defensive items, anything that reduces damage done to them, forget that, we're doing a straight 80. I believe... That still applies weakness and resistance, though, because those aren't considered effects on a Pokemon. Those are like a different gameplay mechanic. But, the thing is, nothing is weak to Dragon-type in the standard format. Nothing is uh, resistant to it either, I don't think, so that's not going to apply. Anyway, what I want to try to make use of, though, is the Timeless GX attack. There's these uh, Pokemon GX attack for this particular, uh, I was going to say theme deck, custom deck. Three metal, two colorless, you do 150, and take another turn after this one skip the between turn step. It's going to be interesting. You don't often find you get to take two turns back to back. In fact, as far as I can tell, this is the first time it's ever been a thing. So, I'm trying to think, how can I make use of that? Now, I'll show you a couple ideas that do come to mind. I'm not using them myself, but if we go with... Oops, I spelled that wrong. Actually, wait, that works. Let's go Ororark. There we go. Uh, show not owned. You could do something like Zoroark GX with the trade ability. Once during your turn, you may discard a card from hand. If you do draw two cards, that could be a way to go. You can also do something like, uh, how about this? Decidueye GX, Feather Arrow. Once during your turn, you can put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So anything that you do like once per turn, you can do twice in a row. It's maybe not that big of a deal because you only get to basically skip the opposing turn once your GX attack is a one per game kind of thing. But I'm going to try something a little bit more creative. Now, since we're going to be hitting for 150, and the turn ends, then we begin a second turn, what I want to try to do is see if we can manipulate these damage counters somewhat. So first of all, I have three Dialga GX in the deck. One possible way for manipulation is going to be Meow Stick with the Ear Influence. For one Psychic Energy, move as many damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon as you like to any of your opponent's other Pokemon in any way you like. So... 
Hopefully, if things work out, I'm going to get a few of those shreds off and hit things for 80 damage. If they retreat, something else comes up, hit them for 80. The moment we hit for the 150 of Timeless GX, the very next turn, we can go again right away before the opponent can do anything. I can then start maneuvering damage around however I want. If that doesn't come to play, though, we do have an option here with Haunchcrow. Raven's Claw does 10 damage plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on all of your opponent's Pokemon. So again, if we can get some damage off with Shreds and then go for it. Look at all that big flock of Murkrow back there. I got distracted. Anyway, get those Shreds off to 150 with the Timeless GX. I've got a lot of damage from Raven's Claw being able to be sent out there. Which would be kind of cool. So I've got 3 Dialga GX. I skipped that name pretty quick. I should slow down. We've got 3 Dialga GX. We've got 3 Meow Stick. 3 Esper to evolve up. 3 Haunchcrow. 3 Murkrow. Alright, let me tell you this though. What are you doing, Willow? She's being cool. Alright. With nine basic Pokemon in this deck, I don't know how many times I mulliganed in yesterday's attempt at a video. So, I don't know. We'll see if it happens. I'm feeling somewhat in better spirits today. So, if negativity happens, I'll have to roll with that. Of course, I can't really change things. Random luck of the draw is how things go sometimes. Alright. Let's scroll down to the energy cards. i got a whole mixture of different stuff going on here. we got five... I'm already thinking I should change this. What I'm gonna do on the fly, I'm gonna remove one of these psychic energy. We don't need that many psychic. So first of all, let's take that out of there and let us add another metal energy. I think that's probably the best thing to do right now. I could even take one more out if I wanted to. But anyway, currently we've got six basic metal and three basic psychic. To power up Timeless GX a little bit quicker, as well as Shred, or even Raven's Claw, i got a couple of double colorless energy in here. And a nice little feature of the unit energy. This card provides, well it says colorless energy, but while it's attached to a Pokemon, it provides lightning. Forget that. Psychic and metal energy, but only one energy at a time. That could power up either the ear influence or add some energy onto our... Dialga GX. Those are going to be the energy cards. What is that? Four special and nine basic. Now the trainer cards. Alright, so we have some evolutions this time around. We've got a couple of Evo sodas to help find an evolution Pokemon from one of our basics in play. Get right from the deck, evolve it. Good stuff. You know how Evo Soda works. We've got a couple of field blowers. You must know how that works as well because I use them in every deck and I highly recommend using field blower. Choose up to two in any combination of Pokemon tool cards and stadium cards in play and discard them. Very nice. We have a couple of Max Elixirs to search the top six cards of the deck and attach a basic energy from there to a basic Pokemon on the bench. A little kind of way to sort of speed things up with our, uh, our Dialga GX if possible. I'm wondering if I should include another something here. I'm thinking Energy Lotto. I'll leave things as they are for the time being. Maybe I'll update this mid video too if it doesn't work out. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm starting to second guess myself. Let's just roll with what we got and if it works, great. If not, eh, whatever. We got a couple of professor's letters to search your deck for any two basic energy cards and take them right into hand. Four puzzles of time because as I said yesterday and in pretty much every video, since Versus Seeker is not standard legal and I tend to try to make standard legal decks, puzzle of time is a good way to get back some supporter cards. Play one, look at the top three cards of your deck, rearrange them, eh, decent, not great, but if you play two puzzles of time, which you do have the option to do, choose two cards from the discard pile and put them back into hand. Good way to get some supporters back, some special energy, some tools, whatever you want to bring back. We've got a couple of random receivers as well. Again, not the most competitive card, but it helps me with the various different supporters that I have in the deck. You have to reveal cards from the top of the deck until you find your first supporter and take it. And how about that? I said it right this time. I didn't say search. Very different uh, mechanic, I guess, for gameplay. All right, we have a couple of repels here because the idea is... If I can manage to fire off the Timeless GX and do 150, if the opponent does not faint, I want to be able to get them out of there so I can repel. And, uh, you know what I should actually do? Put in some switches. Because if I want to retreat... Well, no, I guess once I've used Timeless GX, I don't need that many energy on Dialga anyway. So I'll keep things as they are. I'm trying to think, if I want to retreat Dialga GX and bring someone else up, that would be a lot of energy to retreat with. But, 
this might be okay. Anyway, Repel. Force the opposing Pokemon, the active Pokemon, to go to the bench, and the opponent chooses a bench one to bring up. So again, I can move the damage onto the bench. Something else comes up. Raven's Claw can still do that damage, plus 10 more. We could move energy onto the new active if we really want to with Meowstic. A couple options there. We got a couple of... Uh, rescue stretchers, put a Pokemon from the discard pile into your hand, or another option, shuffle three Pokemon from the discard pile into the deck. So whatever situation we find ourselves needing that for, we get to choose. Since I have a couple of special energies in the deck, I've got special charges, two of these. Shuffle two special energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. And I've got just a little bit added damage, added power for our Dialga GX, and actually the Honchcrow as well. Devoured Field Stadium. The attacks of Darkness Pokemon and Dragon Pokemon, both sides, do 10 more damage to the opponent's active Pokemon before weakness and resistance. A little bit more power for the Shred and even Timeless GX. Alright, let's talk about the tools here. Another thing to add more power to our basic Dialga GX is the Fighting Fury Belt. The basic Pokemon this card is attached to gets plus 40 HP and its attacks do 10 more damage. So with the Devoured Field and Fighting Fury Belt, we're bringing Timeless GX up to 170. Shred itself goes to a nice 100. Nice triple digits there. The Supporter Cards. I've got how many? A fair amount. Let's take a look at them. Bridget. Search your deck for three basic Pokemon except EXs, or one EX if you're using it, and put them onto your bench and then shuffle up. I've got a Cynthia as well to shuffle my hand away, draw six fresh cards, hopefully something more beneficial than what I'm shuffling. Since I want to try to maneuver damage onto the bench to uh, kind of mess things up a little bit for the opponent, I've got two Guzmas in here this time. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon, and if you do, switch your active with one of your benched. I've got uh, Pokemon Center Lady to heal 60 damage and all special conditions from one of your Pokemon. I've got two Skylas, again, a very highly recommended card. Search your deck for any trainer card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle up. And the last card is Wally. Just like Evo Soda, but Wally, being the supporter, has a little benefit, letting you use Wally on the Pokemon's first turn in play or your first turn of the game. Normally you can't evolve right away. So that is the deck. 15 Pokemon, 32 trainers, and 13 energy. Let's hope I can at least show off some power. Again, I've said before, I've, I think I said yesterday, I don't mind losing a match. I just want to show off what this Pokemon can do. Let's see if we can manage that. Let's go to the Versus. I messed up again. I'm not, yeah, I'm not unsaving those. I'm taking that save. Fourth to the past is joining us in the present as our future hopefully holds a win or two. All right, Golden Locks, you've had your time to shine, but I'll use you again, possibly, on our live stream Sunday evening, which is tomorrow. Will Shepard with Colorless and Psychic getting the coin flip. I kind of want to go second. What do you think, Willow? Yeah, she agrees. If I can go second, which I can, I want to leave with Dialga GX to get overclocked. Come on. Do we mulligan? No. And we have Dialga GX in hand. We got a metal energy as well. Decent bit of a setup. But I need to get some more cards out of hand to make good use of the overclock. Welp. Hmm. Drompa GX. So that can hit me for 150 with that Berserk. Oh, we get to go right away. Sweet. Let's drop this down to Dialga. We're going to Devour Field. We can't hit you yet, but I can draw one card. So Overclock, not helping us all that much. I got a Guzma, though. That's something, I guess. <sighs> so, Crushing Hammer. do Yes. Thank you. do I can't be upset with that. The odds were in their favor. Poe Town. Hmm. This presents some danger. Alright, alright. We gotta get ourselves some metal energy here. Don't enhance hammer. <laughs> what did I just... I didn't actually finish saying it, but what was I about to just say? This guy is annoying me. Big wheels keep on turning, eh? Alright then. Hmm. I mean, why not? I'm gonna wait and use special charge for if I lose another energy. Are you gonna crushing hammer me again is the question. Come on!
Oh, what happened to the crushing hammers? Did you run out? Looks like you might have run out. Okay. Oh, we see our good old buddy Trubbish as well. What kind of garbage are we looking at? So we don't have any items in the discard pile. That is fine. Of course, you happen to get rid of my Guzma. Well, this ain't looking good for round one. Go ahead, get your double colorless. So we have the Trash Alliance card. Get the double colorless. Would you stop discarding my energies? I'm gonna call this game over too. This is annoying. Look, okay. And again, the deck is not giving me what I need. This isn't my fault. It's just not allowing anything. Alright, fine. <sighs> See, I don't want to scrap another video. I mean, I am limited in time in getting stuff done. This guy, come on. I know, right? Willow agrees. You probably couldn't hear her, but she meowed in agreement. She's like, what is this guy's problem? Will Shepard. Knock it off. Alright. This might help. Cynthia, what do you think? Willow, give me some support. Give me some advice. What do I do? At least we got something. Um, hmm. I'm going to puzzle of time. Just one. We'll see what's on the top cards here. I guess that gives us energy. Uh, let's use Field Blower next. Alright, we're not going to shuffle anything up. We're not going to play any of those two items. Let's see, how many items have I played now? What do you want? Okay, she wants out. You can roll. You don't want to witness the devastation. I understand. It's totally understandable. Okay, so they're not actually going for... the Berserk. Kinda helpful, I guess. Now we got Guzma. Hmm. If I play Guzma now, though, we... Okay, hang on, hang on. Let me think here. What did I put on top? Field Blower was on top. I think I'm still gonna try this. If we get one energy... Yes, I can do the retreat. Alright, I'll put this onto our Dialga. Which one do I want to bring up? Hmm. We've got a 3 retreat cost. We'll do that. We'll bring up the Trash Alanche Garbador. We're going to retreat Murkrow. Can I shuffle anything back in just the one double colorless? I'll still hang on to that for the time being. Let's use our Overclock. Draw four more cards. Another double colorless. Okay. This could be a thing. And we get the Field Blower as well. This guy. I'm gonna concede. Honestly, this I can't. <sighs> We're going for another match. I can't do anything here. I just happen to get one of the most annoying players in the game. Alright, let's try another match. I can't even explain words for what was going on. Okay, up against... What is your name? Oh, Comet Scout. I'm looking at the tiny little words up there. So we're going to go second again. Do we get our Dialga GX to lead off with? Of course we don't. We've got Murkrow, everybody. Excellent stuff. Alright, we got a random receiver, though, at least. Let's see what we can find. That's a bad start for the opponent. You never want to leave with a Tapu Lele GX. You want to be able to play it from your hand. You don't get to use the uh, Wonder Tag. Wonder Tag, right? Yeah, the Wonder Tag ability. When you play from hand onto the bench, you get to search your deck for a supporter card. When you start off with it as your active Pokemon at the start of the game, you don't get to play it from hand. Alright, we have a couple energies, but I want to see what the Random Receiver gives us. We've got Skyla. I 
guess what I'm going to do is play Skyla and grab Bridget. Alright, so we have 70 HP. Slightly risky, but what I'm going to do is throw an energy onto our Murkrow. If they put a double colorless on top of Lele GX, they get a knockout and they win this match. But I want to be able to pay for the retreat cost next turn if I can get Bridget out and get a Dialga GX to the bench. Do not double colorless. Or even one energy and a Fighting Fury Belt is the knockout as well. Brook Wizzle, does that help me? Do I have any water or fighting Pokemon? I should know this. No, I don't. I got Darkness, Psychic, and of course Dialga. There's the Ultra Ball. Are we going... No? I was to say, are we going to see Tapu Lele GX being drawn with the Ultra Ball? Maybe not. Because I already have their supporter use for the turn. Ace Star you. Oh boy! We got us a Greninja Break deck. That'll be fun. I can see the strategy already. Alright, anyways. Bridget is the way to go here. We'll get a couple of Dialga GX and we'll grab an Esper. Let's go ahead and throw this onto our Dialga GX. We're going to retreat the Murkrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's evolve up. Put a Fighting Fury Belt on this one, I believe, will do. Let's Field Blower away their Brooklet Hill. We'll keep our Fighting Fury Belt. And we're going to play the Devoured Field and get max draw support, or not draw support, but max draw power from the Overclock. Get five more cards. We got us a couple of puzzles of time. Alright, so there is the water duplicates Frogadier. I'm gonna see a star you, sorry, evolve and star me with space beacon. What have you lost so far? One water energy. You lose one more, actually. So check this out. What they can do, they can retreat. So like. I would have retreated first, unless you plan to. Yeah, I was gonna say unless you plan to hit me, because you could have had two energy in hand. I don't know. Okay, we see water duplicates. Search the deck for up to three Frogadier and put them onto the bench. I like that attack because it's not often you see a stage one going onto the bench without having to evolve up. Very cool stuff. We got a Meow Stick now. Puzzle of Time, could you help us in any way? Well, you might. What we're going to do, play two Puzzles of Time. What do we want to bring back? We have no tools to worry about here, so we don't need the Field Blower right now. I'm going to get a Random Receiver. I'm going to get Skyla as well. I'm going to play the Random Receiver first of all and see what we can find off the uh, or from the top. I was hoping for Cynthia to get us a new Hand of Cards. Can we find a double colorless? Not just yet. We have an Esper here, though. <sighs> I'll put this to the Esper. And let's use Overclock again. Where are my double colorlesses? Kinda want those right about now. There goes Brooklet Hill down once again. But they're having a bit of an energy shortage. Now, of course, they could use... No, they can't use Space Beacon. They ain't got the energy. A Fighting Fury Belt. Once again, we'll play that onto our Dialga GX. Um, hmm. What do we want? I know what I want. One of my double colorless, but uh, what's the best way to get that? don't see really an option. So let's just go ahead and get the Professor's Letter. I'll be able to get some more energy out of the deck, at least. In fact, you know what I realized? Why did I put the energy on our Esper when we have Meowstic sitting right there? I messed up. Okay. So let us play this energy. We can't use the Overclock, because of course we got six cards in hand already. So we'll end it right there. The next turn, I can use Shred, at least. I can maintain a Shred of Dignity, hopefully. I'm going to knock out on... Oh, we got Splash Energy. My opponent needs some sort of draw support. There's a double colorless. So what we're going to do, in case they somehow manage to get an Enhanced Hammer, I'm going to put this onto the Alga GX right now. Let us shred. Take a 
taking a Pokemon down. Getting a prize card. Psychic. Alright. What comes up? Oh, come on. I wanted you to send up the Tapu Lele. Another Splash Energy. Alright. I'm going to actually use Repel now. Well, first, what do we want to power? I'm going to give this to the Meowth. No, wait a minute. Let's Repel first. Let's see what they bring up. There's the Lele. Alright, check this out. Double colorless. I'm going to Timeless GX. 160 damage. And... Let's put an energy onto our Meow Stick. I'm going to retreat into Meow Stick. There we go. And let's use the energy, or sorry, the ear influence. Let's take out a couple of these froggy deer. This is going to take a while. But I can move enough damage to take two of them out to rid of those splash energies as well. Because I believe this is not damage being done by an attack, so they shouldn't go into the hand. I swear there's no quicker way to do this, eh? There is six damage counters. One more brings down this froggy deer. And boom, there it goes. And now let's move. Enough to take this one down. So at least I showed off this kind of a combo. It did rely on the fact that my opponent could not get the proper cards in hand, though. And Meowstic has a one retreat cost as well, so we can simply retreat that next turn for our Dialga to come back up. Two more damage counters, and then we're done. Yeah, they're not too fond of this one. We're going to end it right there. We're going to keep the two damage counters on top of Lele. So we'll get a prize for that first Frog of the Year. We'll get a, a prize for another one as well. And the Meowstic. Okay. What is up for my opponent now? And they're going to just call it quits right there. I mean, I'll accept that. That's kind of decent. I'm going to go one more match, though. I think we've got time. Whoa! 100 tokens. Yes, I think that puts us up over 2,000 now. Yeah, 2,001. It's like when a bridged Vegeta misread the scouter and said it was over 9,000. No, it was 1,006, right? You guys don't know what I'm talking about? Watch Dragon Ball Z of which. All right. I feel content that I at least showed off the combo that can work with the Timeless GX and maneuvering the energy. Let's go one more match against the water type deck of Sick Joey. You're under the weather, are you? Maybe you should take some medicine. Can we go second, please? Yes. Can we start with the Alga GX? No. Alright then. We'll be with our Esper. But if we can get Dialga GX somehow off the top, I got Guzma, but I would need an energy as well. Hey, Remoray, we're going to see Octillery, aren't we? Okay, so, Skyla. We got a Psychic. We can at least scratch this thing. Let's hope they don't knock us out in one hit. Let's go for Skyla. Let's get Bridget. There you are. Next turn, we can get some more basics out. I think just for the time being, we're going to throw this onto our Esper to make sure we don't lose on turn one. And we can hit them for 20! I mean, that's something. Do we see evolution on the opposing side for the Abyssal Hand draw support, though? Choice man. Actually, I was going to say, that doesn't scare me. Kind of does, because, of course, we do have GXs in this particular deck. What a gun. 20. So two more hits from our Esper will take this thing down. Let's go for Bridget, however, first of all. Get a couple of our Dialga GX and one of our Murkrow. Yeah, that one's fine, I guess. So, I could evolve up, but that's not going to help us. We can't do damage. We just move energy. Let's see what the top cards are. I guess we'll get... Well, hang on. Let's get the double colors and then Evo Soda. we got Guzma as well, if they get another bench Pokemon. Alright, let us scratch away. 
we should survive one more hit unless we see evolution and the artillery does some damage to us. I guess they had nothing to work with. I want to go one more match then. We didn't get to show off what Murkrow or Hawkstro could do. Not that that's really a goal, but... I'm just trying to fill up some time, basically, to see if we can show off. Oh, wait a minute! I got myself some Hypnotoxic Lasers. Do I use those? No, because they are not standard legal right now. They are decent cards, though, if you're going to play Expanded. I wonder when the Expanded format's going to change up. You know, as a professor, I should stay on top of stuff like that. We'll go one more match, and then we'll call it a day. See, it's weird. When I get a win, I kind of want the opponent to beat me at some point, to sort of even things out, to keep the cosmos in balance, you know? And C Stotes 01 could be the one with a metal, water, dragon, and colorless deck. Let's call for the head side. Not getting that. But I'd like to go second, please. Thank you. I would like to start with Dialogue GX, please. Thank you. No. Oh, well. Oh, they had no basics. Um. I'm going to leave Murkrow, because if we do get our Honchkrow, at least it can do some damage. So what do we have to work with? we got Cynthia. I'm not going to take cards for the Mulligan. As I say, I'm not competitive. I normally do not take cards for any Mulligans. Mount Coronet, that's kind of interesting, because we have Metal Energy in our deck, so we can make use of that. We also got us a Devoured Field. Alright, but I have Cynthia. I kind of don't want to use her immediately, though got some good cards for the time being. I want to hang on to the Evo Soda until the next turn. We have a Drumpa. Outrage just 20 plus 10 more for each damage counter on Drumpa. Dragon Pulse does a powerful 100 if they lose two cards from the top of the deck. So let us... I'm going to try Max Elixir. We got an energy. The scary thing is we're losing a lot of our metal energy in this sense. So I'm going to put the unit energy onto Murkrow. I can actually... No, I can't. I can actually use Mean Look. I forgot. No, it doesn't provide darkness. So, the reason I put that on is because, of course, when we evolve into Honchkrow, it takes any energy, colorless energy, to uh, use its Raven's Claw attack. Next turn, I'm going to Evo Soda into Honchkrow. I can drop the Devoured Field. I can play Cynthia. I can throw that Metal Energy onto uh, Murkrow as well, but I think I'll wait and see what Cynthia gives me. I'd rather maintain that Metal Energy if possible for our good old buddy Dialga GX. Plus, I have the uh, Retreat cost paid for right now as well for Murkrow. So Ultra Ball, discarding a couple cards. What did they get rid of? I forget what they got rid of. What did they just get? Full Art Dusk Bane of Crows with GX. Uh oh. They rid of N? Lily. Okay. What the? How dare they use a Dialga GX against us? What nerve. Hello, Meowstick. Let's go ahead. Evolve up. We'll evolve into our Haunch Pro as well here. This kind of scares me because they're going to get more power from their Dialga GX as well. But let's go ahead. We'll play Cynthia. Shuffle up. Draw six. There's one of our Dialga right there. We'll throw an energy onto it. I'm gonna throw that onto Dialga. We'll retreat Hot Crow. How many special energies have we discarded? Just the one right now. Huh, do I want to bring this thing up? Like, I can play the Repel, and they can choose what comes up, but I'm wondering if they bring this up, could it hurt us? We could do 60 with the Claw Slash. And Sun's Eclipse is a one hit KO if they get enough energy powered up. Basically, I want to get Repel out of here. I want to try to thin out my hand as much as possible. In fact, in that sense, I'm going to play Special Charge and shuffle in that unit energy. What one do we see coming up? We see the Dusk Main Necrozma. Alright, let's shuffle back in our unit energy. And maximum support of our Overclock. I could have actually used Field Blower as well, but I want to hang on to that. We got double colorless. We got the uh, uh, Skylet is good as well too. So if we hit it with Shred, that does 80. We can then do another 100, which would be decent. 
Actually, no, we would do 100 with our Shred because of the uh, Fury Belt and the Devoured Field. Then we'd be doing 120 with Honchkrow. We could two-hit KO this Duskmane Necrozma, which I kind of like the idea of. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of Metal and eh, Let's grab a Psychic. So we can at least start doing some energy manipulation if need be. But first of all, I'm going to put an energy onto our Haunch Pro. I'm going to Field Blower away their Choice Band, I guess. I'll keep everything that I have in play right now. I should have thrown the energy onto Dialga so we can actually hit it, first of all. My mistake. My bad. Let's go for some more energy out of the uh, deck, though. Thin it out a little bit more. Grab a Metal and another Psychic. Yeah. Now, we can't use our Overclock because, of course, our hand is filled up. But let's play one of our Puzzles of Time and see what we're going to get off the top next turn. I'll get Skyla. The other cards don't matter, of course, when I play Skyla, it's going to wind up shuffling the deck anyway. So that's that for that turn. We see a double colorless onto the Dusk Main Necrozma GX to hit me for 60. I had a kind of decent hand of cards, but I guess I can't fault you for that. Your hand wasn't working for you, so you got to get yourself. You're not really playing that to help me out, I understand. We got a couple more Dialga GX I can drop down at least. Can I get double colorless? I actually can! Sweet! So I'll drop that one Dialga GX. I'll put this onto our active one. Since we're not going to use our overclock, I'll just go for the shred for 100. And then, if I need to, I can retreat and get our Honchcrow up to knock this thing out. Kind of decent. I would lose a lot of energy to do that, though. So I think I'll keep this Dialga GX active. You can now hit me for... Ooh, a Floatstone, eh? Hmm. Well, this makes things interesting. Let's see what I could do. Haunch Crow could do... 100 and... 10 to the drop off. 100 now. Alright. Wait, does that help me? No. I've got no energy in the discard pile. I could, though, when I retreat. So we got some options happening here. Let me think. I kind of don't want to hit this thing yet, because the more we hit it, the more outrage is going to hurt us back. All I need is a good Guzma, though. What we see over here, we have a Lolan Vulpix. If we see the uh, Lolan Ninetales with the Luminous Barrier, that could be a problem. Not the worst thing ever, though. Okay, so they need three energy to retreat. I want to power up for the Timeless GX. I'm banking on the fact that we get a Metal Energy, though. Let's drop this Dialga GX and go for the Overclock. I don't want to touch this thing before we're ready to knock it out with one hit. It wasn't metal energy. I need the metal. Hmm. I have a double color. Another double color, though. Yeah, this thing is scary now. It's powered up. Sun's Eclipse is a thing. Meteor Tempest is a thing as well. Either one has enough power to knock me out, even with that Fighting Fury belt. I've only got 220 total HP. Oh, there's a switch card. Alright. Fair enough, I guess. But, you've just spelled Demise for your Dusk Main Necrozma. Because Honchcrow comes up and gets the KO. Does it? Wait, hang on. Yes, it does. Okay. I scared myself for a second. No need. Let's grab a couple of basic metal. We'll drop another Esper to the bench. We'll put a metal onto Honchkrow. 
I don't need to get rid of anything that they have. I mean, I should probably get rid of their Mount Coronet. Did I get all my metal energy back? Yes, I did. So let's get rid of their Mount Coronet. And just because it's going to get discarded with the knockout anyway, so long Floatstone. And now go for the Raven's Claw. Should be 110. And down goes the powerful Dusk Main Necrozma GX. And a special charge as well. Get back to double colorless. Now that does weaken our Raven's Claw though. Which is the problem, because now we have zero damage on the opposing side. So we don't get to you know, benefit off of that. There's the beacon. Oh wait a minute, what is this? It's alternate art. What is this from? I like that alternate art though. Very nice. Must be from a special collection box, I'm thinking. Is there any way we can check? No, I don't think so. But I know sometimes you get to check your, you know, the maybe the set that the cards come from and stuff like that. Not so much right now. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna play random receiver to get a supporter card out. That's going to increase ever so slightly how many energy are in the deck. So we might be able to find Max Elixir helping us out. Psychic. We'll throw that onto one of our benched. Uh, they all get here. I'm gonna throw this onto the other one. We're gonna retreat the Haunch Crow. No, are we? Not yet. We can't really make use of it. I'm trying to think, what can we do to thin up the hand and draw more cards? Probably not a lot. So let's just go ahead and Raven's Claw, a measly 10 damage. That leaves us to do 20 damage next turn, though. Should be up to 30. Oh, the scary thing, if they retreat this, though, this drop is going to do a lot of damage with Berserk. This will be interesting. Berserk works if they have damage on the bench, they do more with their Berserk attack, but the more damage on their bench, the more powerful Raven's Claw becomes. Interesting. So we see... Their Dialga powering up. This could be a bit of a mirror match of Dialga versus Dialga, which would be kind of cool. So I think next plan of action is going to be to retreat Haunch Crow. Oh, neat. Neato, neato stuff. We got Wishful Baton. Have we used both our field blowers? Yes, we have. And a beacon once again, getting some more Pokemon out of the opposing deck. Spirit Tomb and another Alolan Vulpix. So I guess the Vulpix is here just for the beacon. So let us retreat into Dialga GX here. Throw a double colorless onto it. And we're going to simply go for the shred. Get another prize. It's going to be interesting to see, what if they Timeless GX me in response? They can't on this next turn, though. They can hit me for the Shred of 80, though. I can always heal off that with uh, Pokemon Center Lady. Or heal 60 of it, not the full 80. And if we get a couple of Shred attacks off, that would be pretty awesome. We have a Unit Energy in hand also. So if I can get unit energy on there, as well as one more metal that gives us our Timeless GX powered up. A Professor's Letter. A little basic. We have two metal energy in the opposing hand. Look at our dex. She's down to 16. I'm down to 18. We see the Shred. We see the Shred. Might as well call this thing Shredder from good old Ninja Turtles. Alright, let's put a Fighting Fury Belt down there. We'll evolve into a Haunch Crow. Heal. Let's go ahead and toss a unit energy on there as well. I'm almost tempted to use the uh, overclock, but now let's just go simply for the shred. Do 90. One more hit from that, and we knock this thing out. I kind of want to see Timeless GX come in. They get double colorless though. If they get the timeless GX attack against us. Fortunately, that is not going to happen just yet. We got to get some more energy though. Ooh, 
Ooh, Halucha. We gotta choose one of our bench Pokemon to come up. Who wants to take the hit of 80? You do? Really? Now we're gonna set up this Honchkrow. We have the retreat paid for already anyways. I think it was Dance. He's like, I'll do it, take me! He's like, I appreciate your suggestion, Honchkrow, but nah. You'd be stuck up there, unfortunately. And there is the Shred. 80 damage. Okay. That's what I was hoping to find. Let's retreat Haunch Crow, bring up the Dialga GX, throw this onto it, and go immediately for Timeless GX. Now, you do get to move those energies thanks to the Wishful Baton, but whatever comes up next is taking a big hit as well. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. We'll have to shred. And we're doing 90. Ooh. Oh, we got one prize left to take, too. I hope we find a Guzma off of that. So this thing can hit for... Oh, wait a minute. That's kind of decent. Come on, where's Guzma? That's Wally. We don't want Wally. We want a Guzma. Oh, we can at least hit you for 90. Let us special charge. I want to bring back the double colorless. And... Let's puzzle of time. I wanted to find a uh, double colorless if I could have. Well, in that case, let's get another puzzle of time on top, I guess. So what I could do next turn is play Wally. -E, I think it would let me, and just shuffle things up. Do I want to do the damage to you? I guess we'll do ninety. gonna hit me back pretty hard though. 50 plus 50 more for each head, but if they even flip one tails for the start, they're gonna paralyze you. So they'll do at least say 100 or 50 and paralyze. N! I kind of want N, yes. I only get one card back. If it had been double colors, that would have been awesome, but I guess the luck is not there. What I might do then is use uh, Overclock. Assuming we don't get paralyzed. If they can get one more energy, they could... And actually, no, they can do the paralysis right now if they flip the tails. They are paralyzed. That's not the best thing. And uh, let's just go ahead and pass the turn back to them. So they can't knock me out with the rolling tackle. So I have to hope that they can get some more paralysis or... I think you would need two heads to do 150, yeah, 220 total. So Dialga GX could hang in here for a little bit. Or not. That was well played! <laughs> oh man! Um, let's end up, I guess. <laughs> Meow stick. That was kind of decent, too. Ah, hmm. I'm going to hang on to the puzzle of time, actually. Let's end it right there. Did I put the other puzzle on top? I think I did. Because if I can get both... Oh, this is going to hurt. So you got, is that 90 damage on you? Alright, if I can get one Psychic Energy. Really? I thought I put two puzzles on there. How did I shuffle? What did I do to shuffle? Oh, they played N, right, never mind. Um, so... Let's Guzma, I guess, this thing. I'll send up our Haunch Crow. I'll play the Puzzle of Time. Good. Get an energy. I 
kind of want them to get the knockout. They have a psychic energy. What I can do, I can attach a psychic energy to the Meow Stick. If I can get Meow Stick into the active spot, I can move the damage off of Licky Licky onto either the Spirit Tomb or I believe the Halucha as well. They would faint. kind of a long drawn out fight. I didn't think this last one was going to last as long as it has. But it's kind of cool. It's showing up a whole bunch of different Pokemon. That's kind of why I do this. I don't really explain this, I guess, very thoroughly when I'm doing these videos, but I kind of want to show off lesser Pokemon, not just the Pokemon GX in each set. So I get to see some, excuse me, hiccups out of the Professor, first of all. Second of all, you're getting to see what the Raven's Claw can do. You're getting to see off Switch. kind of want that, though. It's not a knockout. Hmm. Well, go ahead and knock me out. I just hit the microphone. Sorry about that. What I want to do is bring up the meow stick. Like I don't want to throw the energy on just in case. Oh no! There goes the damage counters. Ah! Good call by my opponent. I wanted to move those damage counters onto the, uh, someone else. Alright, that is going to be game, unfortunately. Can't come back from that one. We'll let them get their knockouts. They can now use Berserk. Oh, wait a minute. If they had... No, they don't really need to. If they had kept the damage, though, they could have done a lot. We're going to let them get the knockout on this Meow Stick here. That was an interesting way for that to go at the end there. There's nothing we can do. Let's we'll just enter it right there. I'll say, well played once again. Not bad. Kind of a lackluster way to end off there, but come on, just go for the attack. You're not really going to try to get that thing powered up again, are you? It's going to hit me one more time. Why any of that, though? See, that's what I don't get. Why do people play out all those cards when you don't need to? You just gotta click attack. Anyway, for whatever reason, they chose to do that. But that is going to be a wrap for today's video. At least we got to see some of the strategies in mind with our... Uh, what did we get to see? Oh, yeah, we got to see how the Raven's Claw can do more damage. We got to see the energy manipula or the damage manipulation of the Ear Influence. And, of course, it all fueled from the power of Dialga GX, for starters, which was pretty cool. Do you have a Dialga GX di or deck idea of your own? I don't know how I messed up all my words just now, but do you have a Dialga GX deck idea of your own? And if so, what is your strategy? Let me know in the comments down below. Because uh, if, if someone wants to recreate a Dialga GX deck of their own, something I have done here as starters could help them. But if you have ways to improve this, let me know down in the comments. That could help them as well. And uh, I guess that's all there is to say. Like I said, there's other ways you can make use of the Timeless GX, like the uh, draw support of, for example, did I say... I don't think I said this one either, but we saw it sort of with the opposing Frogadier deck. We have Starmie with the Space Beacon. So once during your turn, you can actually bring back two basic energy cards, discard a card from hand. It lets you do that twice. So if you need extra energy in hand, you can do that. But yeah, it's kind of hard to think. How can you really capitalize on getting two turns back to back? This is kind of the more creative, crazy idea I could come up with. But of course, folks, I want to say thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, as always, feel free to pop a like down below. Of course, I don't want to always feel like I'm pandering for likes. If you didn't like it, throw a thumbs down, but just let me know in the comments what I can do to improve this. Maybe the deck strategies are not complex enough. Maybe they're not simple enough. Maybe my voice is annoying. I don't know. Whatever you want me to, whatever you want me to do to improve. Maybe I can't speak my words eloquently enough. That could be a thing. But yeah, just let me know how to improve the videos if you didn't like this one in particular. But if you did, of course, I'm glad you liked it. And for some more videos that I have done, check out the link in the description to the Pokemon TCG online playlist. There's also some more links during the outro to some other videos, such as Pokemon Pearl. Pokemon Go is a thing on the channel. I recently encountered a Mewtwo in Pokemon Go, which was pretty awesome. And if you want to see some more daily Pokemon content, 
Let's try that again. I tried to save it. If you want to get some more daily Pokemon content from Professor Chaz, feel free to click the link to subscribe during the outro as well. I'm going to start doing a little thing here on the channel in which I talk a lot more slowly than uh, I usually do because I find that my words tend to outrun my mouth and that's what causes me to mess up. So you might notice a change coming up in the future. You might not. I don't know. But regardless, I want to say thank you again for watching, folks. Professor Chaz is signing off. And, oh, by the way, stay tuned tomorrow for a Pokemon TCG online live stream in the evening. I'll have a schedule set up so you guys can see when that's going to be. I'm also going to do Pokemon Ultra Sun live stream in the daytime tomorrow. So stay tuned for all of the live stream action coming up tomorrow. And hope you'll be there for that. With that, I am now signing off. Professor Chaz is doing just that. Thank you again for watching, folks. And I will catch you next time.